Hi everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Pure, and I'm joined with Mario. What's up, guys? And Connor. Hey, everyone. We're going to talk about love, uh, <laughs> not not as a general concept, or you know, our own love lives. We're going to talk about love, the TV show that uh, debuted on Netflix. It's a Netflix original. It comes from uh, Judd Apatow, and uh, it, obviously all 10 episodes came out at one time because it's Netflix and that's how they do things, but we thought we'd all watch the first episode and just chat about that and see how we feel about the start of it, um, you know, give our thoughts. We will have spoilers for this first episode, so warning for that. Um, the episode is called It Begins. Not that it really matters because episode titles almost mean nothing when you're just going to binge watch the, the whole thing, but um, so... First episode, but no spoilers for anything after that because we've not seen it. So if you're just here to get a sort of general, you know, taste, you could probably get away with it. I would imagine. So, yeah, uh, Connor, did you like it? I'm not sure. I mean, first off, I want to say <laughs> before I, before I watched it, I knew I wasn't really excited, and when I found out the first episode was 40 minutes. I was like, ugh, I didn't, I wasn't really yeah, feeling that. Well, that's why I said it was, you mean, compared more to, like, Master of None. Yeah, but even that wasn't going up to 40 minutes, was it? Uh, that was only, like, 28. Yeah. Or whatever. It's just like, this This just feels long. Are the rest 40? Or is it just the first one? I think the rest are, like, 30 to 35. Right. Okay. Um, I did, I mean, the length did surprise me, because I had left myself 20 minutes to watch it, thinking it'd be 20 minutes long. And I was like, oh, shit, it's 40. Oh, well. But, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of in a similar boat where I'm not really sure how much I like it. There was a couple of amusing things, and there was some things that I liked about it, but I wasn't necessarily into it either. Yeah. You know, it was, it was kind of going through it, and it, like, the the main dude, because it's, I mean, I suppose probably mentioned the premise here, uh, but... Basically, we've got two different people, uh, a man and a woman. Woman's played by, uh, oh god, Britta from Julian, Germany. Julian Jacobs. Yeah, there you go. Um, and the guy's played by some dude that I've never, I don't recognise. So, and they're both in like really shitty relationships at the start of the episode, and then it skips a month later, and they're both just kind of dealing with life and how shit it is. Yeah. <laughs> on their own. Pretty um, much. And it became quite apparent, you know, once we got so long into it, okay, they're not going to meet until the end of the episode. Yeah. Where, where, yeah and what, they're really, what they're trying to do is because obviously it's about love so both of them are in terrible relationships but I think they set up the characters to be like on opposite ends of the spectrum where he comes off being a lot more adult and organized and responsible you know there's a scene where they're talking about ordering like rugs to match like the, the bedroom and you can tell his life is more figured out by what socially is acceptable mm -hmm. and she's obviously more of a mess and just a lot more of just not in control of her life but I think what they're trying to show, the premise is trying to show that even though they seem like they're far apart when it comes to the relationships and some other things are very, very similar. And that's why they find each other to help each other because they understand that part of themselves. They're just, it, yeah, I can see where it's going. They've got to find a, a happy middle ground is, is the aim between yeah. the two extremes. And that that's the, what you want to aim for. feels like the point of the show. Yeah, well, the whole problem is compared to, like, if you compare it as a Master of None, I think the problem is that Master of None clearly has a direction in mind when they made each episode. Like, each episode was almost made like a small movie with comedy bits, but each had, like, a theme and a specific topic. And even the music choice, like, just seemed like, as, I don't remember entirely sure how involved Aziz Ansari was, but the music, the, the, the lines, everything was just kind of in, thought out to have a specific goal, while this just doesn't seem as organized or planned out like even the music like because they have random like hip-hop songs in there for like old school hip-hop songs but they just don't they're just kind of there like they're not as effective as master of none is where there's they fit the tone of this particular episode i don't even remember them happening so you're probably right in that sense because <laughs> if they worked really well i'd have remembered it and went because i mean i didn't love master of none as much as you guys but i definitely remember some of the music choices, especially when it was like the score from Halloween, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> well, it's, it's used yeah, in, a, yeah. in a way where it makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, trying it to yeah. emphasize something. This just seems generic like, background filler music. Well, it feels more like when because Jed Apatow kind of started doing that the most with where like a uh, what well, crap was in a movie. Well, these movies typically are seem really dumb, like Seth Rogen's being an idiot who gets high and does stupid things, but underlying that, there's some message. 
Mm-hmm. Like he f- finds out how to grow up. He needs to grow up and become adult, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of what he's doing here. But now that Aziz has kind of showed us how to do it better, by comparison, this just doesn't seem any. It's not because it was, wasn't particularly funny. I didn't find it particularly touching. Nah, the, the, find nah. it particularly... There, there was a couple of moments that did make me chuckle, like when he's like starting to have a threesome, yeah. and it's, he's really awkwardly trying to fondle the second woman whilst yeah. kissing the first one. That was kind of amusing because it was sort of pointing out how awkward it was. Um, it, it felt really gratuitous though. Because the, the the girls both get topless, right? Now, not that that necessarily bothers me, but the reason why it stood out to me as being really weird is because earlier on there was a couple of sex scenes where they made a point of covering the women up. Yeah. So it felt like okay, they're going to not you know show that kind of thing, and then they did. I imagine it was because of, of the actress, right? Yeah. But it was it points out that she didn't want to do nudity, and then they were just yeah. got two random people who'd be okay for it, and that yeah. and it kind of really highlights the difference of. Not that it was for the script, just because they could for those ones. Yeah, and it it kind of felt just kind of because I th- I think the joke with him trying to fondle the the breast would have been just as funny if she'd been wearing a bra. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it would have been yeah. as funny. Well, they were doing it before, weren't they? When she still had a top on. Yeah, and he was like reaching over, and he couldn't like figure out what he was doing. Um, I don't know. I still, I mean, I'm not a prude. I have no problem with the day and things, but I just it felt weird. It feels like you've well, got to whole... commit to one or the other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that that scene just felt like a sketch. That's kind of the other problem I have, too. Like, the the other, like, Master of None just feels like a show that all cohesively works. This felt more like a collection of random sketches. Yeah, like the bit at work uh, yeah. for him with the with the animal. Yeah, that kind it, of felt like that place, actually, that you mentioned. It feels like they're setting up loads of things for the rest of the show that will have a focus in one episode. But mm. they're just trying to do it all at the start, and there's not really any need. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Master of None for me, and I, I don't know why we keep comparing it because there's really no point. But the the way that each episode was very focused, like, I don't think necessarily all shows have to be that way. Like I'm quite happy with it just being like a serialized thing that it feels like chapters rather than. Whereas that was more like you could take any one of those episodes and watch it on its yeah. own, and it would work as a fairly you know, standalone story, but it would also work as the be part of the overall uh, you know, Narrative. season. Yeah. Um, so I have no problem with that in concept. It's just that I'm not all that interested in what they showed so far. And because some of it did just feel like random sketch moments. I think I want to watch one more episode to see how they interact together. Yeah. The other thing too is with, and then compared to Master Nun, I think Master Nun is just because that's the closest to this. One, yeah, it's a, it's a Netflix, Netflix comedy, and it's a similar. And two, style. they're more like dramas with comedy than they are mm. like full blown comedies. But with that one too, the the first everybody said the same thing. Like the first episode was okay, but then it really picked up with the second and third. It's very possible that it's, the same thing could happen here. Possible, um, and like you say, uh, it's actually probably worth watching the second one just because we don't actually get to see the two leads who are. I mean, the whole point of this show is that they're going to be a couple, presumably, or something like a couple. Um, yeah. We've not seen them interact yet. We we had they've exchanged like a line <laughs> at the end of the episode. Yeah. Um, that said, though, I'm not highly necessarily highly motivated to. Um, uh-huh. See, I want to watch it just in case. Oh, when these two come together, it is actually it's, really it's fun really and good it's show. good to watch. Yeah. And it, it might yeah. be the case. Um, uh, uh, one thing I do appreciate about Master and then though is that even though it is sort of coming of age and it's. You know, middle age coming of age, I should say. You know, it's you know, it's uh, yeah. finding yourself and growing up and all that. I like that that doesn't start with uh, Aziz's character or even any of the other characters being complete like losers. You, you know, like in this, like she, her boyfriend's like a complete drug rattled idiot. She is a wreck. The guy is like this this dweeb who, like, is so is socially, up, he's so socially awkward that. I don't really feel that he's real. Yeah. You know, mm. like... He's a caricature of what a super, like, geeky, awkward yeah. nerd would be. Um, yeah, it's a really good point, because I, I think with Master Man, it worked really effective with... It wasn't until the very end that he comes to realize, I need to change. Hmm. And that's something they even started seeding it throughout the whole season. Because you, you kind of set up the fact that he really likes pasta, and she gets him a pasta maker, and by the end, he kind of comes, I really like cooking, maybe I should go do that. It just came very natural. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the thing. It's, it's made it really obvious that they need to change in this because one's 
you know, taking ridiculous medication just to feel good at night, and then the other ones, I don't, I don't even know, just miserable, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and trying to, you know, act, you know, hang out with college kids and get into really yep. awkward encounters. Yep. But um, we're being really negative, but I, I didn't think it was that bad. No, it so. wasn't awful to sit through. I mean, it wasn't. It just feels kind of pointless to watch. It's like, why would I binge 10, 13 episodes of yeah. this or whatever it is? Like, well, well, and just what's supposed to stand out? Because it's not particularly funny. It's not particularly touching. It's not like, it's, not like, it's obviously going to be really drama focused. It's not as much about like figuring out or having a point or being like having touching moments. It's just, it's like, what is this? Yeah, I don't really care about either of the characters. Do I, do I feel like it is? I feel like. Someone took like a, an indie movie about love, right? That should be about an hour and a half to two hours long, and they've kind of stretched out to ten episodes. So we have all these random extra sketches of attempted comedy. Yeah, this feels like the first fifteen minutes of of an indie movie. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah. But you're right. I don't. Per- I mean, I think the problem with Jillian Jacobs' character is that she when our like idiot boyfriend shows up in the middle of the night like you know the whole I'll fuck you as long as you go away after like I didn't know it made me sympathise with her all that much I didn't really set up anything besides her being just this wreck yeah she'll just she'll go along with it I don't know it didn't make me I don't know I just didn't like I, I didn't feel like oh I feel bad for her because she's in this shitty situation I'm like no no you're enabling him this is your fault <laughs> that you're in this situ- situation. Yeah. And even with the, the other one, with the, the guy, like, when the girlfriend says she cheated them, don't get me wrong, like, cheating's awful, and I'm not saying I was on her side, but he was also, like, oblivious to just how, like, e- even in the first scene when he asked her to move in and she says yes, even throughout that entire scene, I'm like, this is clearly doomed. She's so yeah. not, not interested in him. I don't understand, like, so I don't even feel bad for him when she dumps him. Or... When she revealed she was cheating on him, it was, I don't know. I feel oddly disconnected to everything. It's just yeah. too obvious. It was not trying to be subtle at all. It's like obvious, but at the same time, kind of heightened. So it's also completely unrelatable. Yeah, I mean, this would have been okay if it was that obvious and heightened. If this had been like ten, fifteen minutes of yeah. before they'd met, whereas with this being kind of the whole episode, it just felt too much. And yeah. it's like, what, I'm supposed to relate to the guy who's kind of a nerd? Well, A, he's over the top and he's nerd in this, and B, you know, you can't take away the relatability by having him, you know, having two college chicks try to have a threesome with him. Yeah. You know, it's like, see, now he's in a fantasy and then he's turning down the fantasy. All, all of it, every step of this is unrelatable. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I felt like, yeah, he... considering it was so obvious, he was so oblivious to it. It was like, yeah. It's like this is too obvious. Like why you, the character should at least realize something. Yeah, I, I don't know what, at which point it was obvious. So we're trying to. I mean, honestly, as soon as they said, "Can we go up to your house?" Like I was kind of the, the yeah, moment, yeah. really. But as soon as they were in the room, and as soon as they started talking, I was like, "Well, they clearly want a threesome." Um, exactly. But he, like, he's waiting until they say things. I don't know. It was, and then he's like, "Oh, was that now?" And they're like, "Yeah, obviously. Come on." It's just like, uh It's kind of like... I feel like it really wants to be... Or at least the style of humour, the awkward humour, it really wants to be something that's like out of Kirby Enthusiasm or even something like The Office. A more toned version of it, but that kind of awkward humour where things are awkward and it's funny because of that. Especially the UK office. It felt very similar to that a lot of times. Yeah, like it was trying to go for that, but it wasn't... It wasn't good enough. Yeah, I guess that's, that's it. It wasn't good enough. Mm. Um, and then, like, the, the guys get this these friends and they're talking about uh, him almost going back to his ex or wanting to go back with his ex. And then oh, yeah. the random conversation about the, the woman who died in the bathtub. Like, that whole yeah. scene feels very... Well, the, the whole thing about his friend being like, because you know those two guys, or the older guys are talking, yeah. and he says like, oh yeah, they live together, but they're not gay. And he's like, you got a problem with us being gay or something? Or he thought we were gay. He's like, no, no, I just, you know, I just was saying it was fine. Oh man, are we going to end up like those guys? I was like, I would hope so. We would be so lucky to be friends for that long. 
and I was supposed to try to get you to like feel something for them, <laughs> the fact that he's got friends, but it just was awkward. Like, yeah, especially since Middle had one scene with this guy before that. In fact, we didn't yeah. have any scenes after. He had two scenes. He had the one scene before this, and then that scene. And it didn't and it's really supposed to be his best friend. Yeah, I didn't feel like he was. They were that close on all this. Yeah. So. I'm not feeling uh, it. I mean, I don't hate it. There's nothing terrible about it, but I'm not. Yeah, I th- I'll definitely watch the second one at some point over the next week or so. Yeah. You're not really in a hurry, though. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, there was no way we were going to do reviews of every episode in that sense, but I thought if we liked it enough, we'd maybe, in a week's time, do a full season thing. But, yeah. you know, it doesn't feel like any of us really care enough to bother. And even if you do... I mean, if you watch more and it's good, let us know, but, I mean... Yeah, if it's any better, I'll, I'll report in and yeah, you can um, check it out. No, I'll just keep waiting for Master of Nancy and 2. Yeah, well, we're going to be waiting a while for yeah, that. 2017, I believe. Is the... <sighs> that show was so good, though. It is. Um, interestingly, speaking of Netflix, we, I recorded uh, 1.21 gigawatts earlier, and we're doing trailer talk. And one of the things that came up in the trailers was uh, Pee Wee's Big Holiday, which is a Netflix original movie, mm. which for some bizarre reason is launching the same day as Daredevil Season 2. Bad idea. Counter- Bad idea. I mean, I guess they're kind of different audiences. Yeah, but you're completely moving a ton of audience away from Pee Wee. <laughs> How yeah. many people are going to watch Daredevil that weekend? Yeah. A ton. But what about all the people who don't care about Daredevil? And they're like, fuck it, I just want this. I feel maybe, like they, maybe it shouldn't work. count. Because if, if you don't care about Daredevil, <laughs> something's clearly wrong with you. I agree. But they're out there somewhere. Nice. <laughs> so uh, that this is in the... Uh, the kind of weird middle ground where none of us dislike it per se but none of us are liking it either really so hey it's nice to all agree on something for once so that's all um so yeah netflix um not an original show not an amazing one um but again that's based on the first episode it could get better it could be a you know a really good show by the time you've watched the whole season i don't know but uh, yep. maybe Connor will dip his toes in further and let us find out. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, the first episode of Netflix's new show, Love. Love.